Thomas Chan, welcome to the Undraped Artist Podcast. Hello, Jeff. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure to meet you virtually, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's great to meet you as well. And you are from where exactly? I'm from Milan. I'm here right now. I was born and raised here in Milan, Italy, North of Italy. No kidding. So, I mean, this is probably the dumbest, most ignorant question, but what's it like growing up in such an incredible place? I mean, maybe to you, it's you just take it for granted, you know, but for the yeah. rest of us in America, where our history is only a couple hundred years old, it must be, it seems kind of like an incredible place to live. Yes, it is. It is because everything around here has, has an history, you know, you can, you can be sure that if you, if you, uh, dig a hole in, in the floor, you will find something. There's always problem to build mm, the, the metro and stuff like that in Rome, for example, because you will find something very antique, very, that you can destroy. So you, you will find history everywhere. Oh man, I hadn't so even thought of it very, that way. So yeah, it's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah, that's but, awesome. But. Well, so let's. Uh, I want to start talking about your art a little bit. So, how did you end up getting into art? Have is, has it always been something you were into? Well, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I started drawing when when I was born, I think, because it started as the as the game because my my parents always uh always uh, suggest me and my sister to draw as a, as a game no as so it it comes totally naturally and then it remains like something more professional but it it's basically my passion from when i was born and it's, it's still now it's just like that and so I, I've been drawing all my life since when I can remember I've been drawing. And did you go, and to, I, I, did you go sorry, to any go sort of right. schools or anything to, um, uh, improve your skills? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Here in, in Italy, we have, uh, the artistic high school. I don't know if you have something similar at, at, uh, not high school, sorry, no high school. Yes. It's, uh, it's right. Uh, do you have artistic high school? I mean, from state to state, you know, certain cities might have something like it. I imagine it's, there's not very many like you're about to describe, but I'm, so I'm okay. not sure. What was it like? Be well, it's, uh, basically we have to choose when we are, uh, 14, 13, 13, we have to choose what kind of high school we, we are going to to be in and you can choose a more class classical one or uh uh well, te technical one or professional one or artistic one and you have like two years the first two years is quite the same for everyone except the the one where most specific uh attitude like the the technical one or the, the ones that learn you, uh, that teach you how to uh, do certain work, like um, in the hotels or in the kitchen, stuff like that, more right. professional, I would say in Italian, but I don't know the, the correct translation in English. And, or the, the artistic one. And for example, I made the artistic one. There are, I think, like five or six in Milan. Wow. Uh, artistic high school. Yes, we have plenty of that kind of school. And so I choose, I, I did the first two years that are uh, the same for everyone. And then you have to choose uh, which kind of direction you are going to take. So you have the figurativo, the figurative, mm -hmm. where you learn to to draw and to observe and to to paint theoretically to paint. wow this is amazing <laughs> and yeah yeah but <laughs> okay okay not so <laughs> uh, not as much as you will you will think okay yeah. i think i know where you're and, going yeah okay uh, and you can choose uh, the grafico so more computer and graphic, graphic stuff, design you know, 
Yeah, graphic design, exactly. Or you can choose the uh, Beni Culturali, which means uh, that you are going to to learn how to conserve or um, catalog art. Okay. That does, you, it's, okay, you understand? You understand? Yeah, like an art yes. historian type thing or, or uh, yes, art yes, conservation? Exactly. Exactly. Conservation, art conservation and stuff like that. Or now I know that they have almost in all high schools, they have the artistic high school, they have the, um, the new technology section too. So you will basically learn to use a camera or a computer in a more professional way and stuff like that you, you, into filmmaking and photograph and, okay. and stuff like that. So it's very, it's very specific. And I think it, they are going better and better in this direction. Hmm. And so I, I choose the, the, the figurativo, the figurative one. Okay. And so when I was uh, 16, uh, I started the figurativo and uh, we basically have um, a very, uh, very, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, uh, normal, basic, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. approach to drawing, no? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you will learn to observe and to understand what proportion means, how to observe anything and to be able to, uh, to draw it in the, in a correct way. And, but, but well, it, it really depends on the teacher you have and how, how are you, are you passionate, uh, how, how much passion you have for, for drawing, obviously. Right. It's, is this like, where the exception is? Is this why you're like, wait, wait, it wasn't as good as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, well the, the, the real problem, the, the huge problem is the, the fine art uh, period. The, the oh, yeah, yeah. Of fine art, the, yeah the, this is a real, real problem. But the high school was great. High school was great. Okay, yes. good. And well, the um, the cool thing about going to to art school, to, to, to the artistic high school, to me, it was that I discovered that many people like uh, well, like like to draw as I like to draw because even if I if I always if drawing in. Even before the high school, I thought that I, I wasn't enough good to go to an artistic uh, high school, but my parents pushed me. And really? So, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know. That's great. <laughs> and, uh, yes, yes. But and finally, so you have an education and they teach you the, the process behind the the drawings that you make the, well let me before you before you hold that control. thought for a minute i want to back up a sec yeah. so your parents wanted you to go to this school but you yes. didn't think you were good enough i can relate to that my parents would always tell me yeah. join contests take classes i'm like no yeah. i'm not any good exactly so what did you find out once you got into the school did you still when once you were with other students your age did you did you find that you were actually pretty good or did you have to work to catch up? What was your experience? Well, uh, yes, I found out that I, I was pretty good. Yes. Um, but the, the fact is that the, the one, one thing I learned is that I started drawing from observation very, very early, earlier than other people. So mm. when, when I was six, seven, uh, I was already doing a lot of drawing from observation. Hmm. So po portrait of my family too, but uh, drawings of my house and copying everything. Really? Yes. Yeah, most yes. kids are drawing uh, cartoons and whatnot at that. No, no, I, I, I drew cartoons too. 
Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't have. I didn't have any specific um, attention for for something. It was just to copy. I copied everything was around me. Right. So from from comic books I was reading, or from reality. So the sofa, the table, the the lamp, everything. Hmm. So I, I I put it in. I put in Instagram. Some drawings from when I was seven. You and did. You can... Okay, yes, let's look yes. at those real quick. Let's look at those. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one sec oh, here. Yes. Okay. So how long ago? Okay, first of all, this is the painting uh, yes. I bought from you. Do you remember selling that to me? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure some time ago. Man, I love this thing. I guess it's a drawing, wow. technically. But there is a little piece of paint on it right there and there and there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Freaking love yes. this thing. Uh, I wanted to pull that Thank up because so uh, I didn't want to forget. Um, Thank you all right. so much. So where where are these child drawings? Are they up at the top? Yes, that one. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so... <laughs> That's here, awesome. It, I, I was seven, seven and a half, stuff like that. Wow. And I did... Uh, and I did hundreds of drawing before this one, so you know. But the this series is very important to me. It's very, I, I, I because the I don't know. You, you see the the paper with the. This is my. Yeah, it's grid paper. Uh, my my yeah, my grandmother that is wrote writing that I, I this series is my drawings from that period, the nineteen ninety six in their house in France. So it was Christmas time and I was drawing all the, all the, the house. What? So it, That's so you, unusual it, for a seven-year-old to be drawing a house. Yeah, so if you click, there are all, all the oh, drawings. Oh, there's more, okay. What yeah, the sure. heck, so these are awesome. So you see, <laughs> the, the subject is not a, a normal subject for a, for no. a kid for a child you know no that is so not normal because yeah. even at my age i'm 48 years old and i still get bored drawing chairs and stuff but as a kid you'd have to have an incredible uh -huh. amount of discipline for a seven-year-old to sit and draw a chair yes uh, wow yes i was obsessed with catalogation you know and i'm still am uh-huh still i'm obsessed with that and so uh I uh, I copied everything around me, and uh, I don't know if you if you know, but I always had sketchbooks in my backpack. So maybe in the ends or or in on Facebook, you have seen some of my sketchbook drawings. Well, I have, and so, we'll look at some of those. Um, yes, it later. Was, yeah, yeah, and th this is uh, returning to the. To the previous conversation, this is a very huge um, luck for me as a as a teenager to start drawing on sketchbook and taking the sketchbooks around with me because I always draw in every time, every single moment of my life. These sketchbooks are the the first thing that um, people. Uh, started to recognize my work because I was basically a sketchbook artist at mm. first for most of the people, and and to to have done well, th th these sketchbooks were very important to me because also because the first time I've seen uh, J James Jean drawings, James Jean sketchbooks. Oh, I'm not familiar uh, with him. J you you don't know James Jean? Jean, how do you spell Jean? Uh, Jean, uh, like blue jeans. Oh no, I'm not familiar. I got to look that one up. Ah, really? Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. I'm sure you know him. <laughs> maybe I do. Maybe I do. I'm bad with names, but I got to look that one okay, up. Okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, he is a. Um, an incredible draftman and he's a, an awesome artist too but uh, he basically have this uh, dozens of sketchbook in in the internet in his websites and looking at them um, 
was a really uh, kick, I don't know, for me because I saw that everyone, uh, everyone, um, someone else is, was doing that stuff, but it was already a, a famous artist. Okay, so this well, is James Jean. Okay, so I can see why you like him because you guys have a similar aesthetic. Yes, especially on some of the drawings that he has on he have on the website that are older. No, maybe well, maybe older than this. Okay. Um, Should we go to a different sketchbook? He, uh, yes, he has different sketchbooks and try try one. Well, not I'll this try one, but he, because this one are drawings from imagination, and he has done a lot of uh, of sketchbooks about what were surrounding him. And so this with, with drawing, both bell, like yes, this drawing, bullpen points. Yes, like that draw, like that drawing. Yeah. And the fact is that I was doing since years the exactly same thing on my sketchbooks. Well, he 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 does it ten times better than me. But the fact was that for the first time I saw an artist, a famous artist, that was doing the same stuff that I was doing. Uh, well, and on sketchbooks, right? Uh, not in the studio. And so I thought, well, maybe my drawings could be appreciated on on that level too. I mean, on in the artistic, uh, um, uh, yeah, the on, um, well, on the artistic uh, world, right? Because I, I I was just doing my sketchbook for myself. You know, it was my experience. It was my diary. It was my my not my thoughts because I I didn't use to to write something about what what I was doing but I always write uh, what um, where I was when and with who so it was a diary to me mm. and and then I discovered his work and I said to myself wow then the, I'm not the only one who is doing this amount of drawings with ball pen just copying. <laughs> Uh, what surrounds him, what surrounds me uh, in this period, because uh, as I was saying, uh, as, I will, as I said, uh, I didn't have any links with people that, are, that w were working in, my, in the mean, well, in now, in, the contemporary. Right. right. This kind of drawings, uh, I always done this the, this kind of drawings. Yeah. In every situation, and I in love my them. house, at the at the pub, and in vacation or yes, this, they're this incredible. Is a Some of these I, are just incredible. Uh, the amount of detail in them. Yeah. Thank you. This the this is the another chapter of my. Uh, uh, how to say of my of my draftman journey? Okay, <laughs> I can say like that because uh, in this sketchbook I started drawing with the uh, with the painter brush with the the pen brush, you know. Mm -hmm. And the pen brush allows you allows you to to draw in a totally different way, and you have to to think in a totally different way because it's not drawing; it's more painting right no and as the teacher i always try to let the student have be very very clear what is to draw with lines and what is to um to paint to represent to draw something to create a drawing without lines without outlines because yeah we in school we basically we always oh, oh, I don't know in it in Italy uh, when we learn to draw it's always about uh, it always about lines it's right, always right. about contour outlines but we don't have outlines in the real world so 
how can I describe something, how can I draw something without using lines? And why, if I succeed, the, the drawings the drawing will appear more realistic. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I started to understand that you can draw without describing, without, without going, we, we, without describing is the, I think is the good word because yeah. you are, you are, if you, for example, if you click on the, the little girl here, uh, we, we were in Vietnam here. Mm -hmm. And this little girl saw that I was drawing and then she asked me to do a portrait of her. And so I did. And to, to go back to, to what I was saying before, if you, for example, zoom in, uh, in her face, we, we, we can clearly... Uh, well, uh, oh, I'm not with, sure uh, I can zoom yeah. into it. Okay, no, it's not a problem, but... The fact is that I didn't draw any eye or I didn't draw any nose no. or any mouth. It's just perception. So this kind of drawing, it's based 100% on percep perception. Right, right. So you, you are, every time you do a drawing like this, you are playing with the, the other people's brain because they you are drawing without drawing we are you are drawing without describing yeah i don't know if it, if it makes sense it does it's brilliant yeah and this is i mean a um, lot of us paint this way you know this is the way i teach to paint but it's it's interesting exactly that when you yeah. take a brush up uh because i've i've tinkered around with a brush pen as well but i haven't brought it to mm -hmm. this level where i actually use it like a brush i don't know why that never occurred to me I still tend to use it like yes. a pencil or a pen. Yes, exactly. Uh, and and from this, for, uh, go go ahead in in drawings. This one, the second one. Yes. Yeah, there okay. is no line I, I in always... that except around the tree, and that's hardly anything. Exactly, exactly. So I I always use these drawings uh, as a as an an example for my students to let them understand this concept that, that we are talking about. And the, the thing is that if we zoom on the grass, yeah. we can see that the grass is just lines, vertical lines, mm -hmm. okay? And if we zoom on the leaves, it's just some dark spot positioned in a certain uh, part of the sheet. Mm -hmm. So, the same is for the for the rocks on the wall. So if I didn't draw grass and you see grass, if I didn't draw uh, leaves and you are seeing leaves and I didn't drew, uh, draw uh, rocks and you're seeing rocks, it means that something is, is happening in a, in a, um, in a more per perceptual way. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah, so now I wonder if a student if does a student say, wait a minute, I mean, I know the answer to this, but does a student ever say, wait a minute, there are lines around the bricks and there are lines for grass. They are not lines. They're okay. not lines. These are contrast. These are so shadow here shapes. Here we open, it's contrast. It's just contrast. It's, it's not, well, it's shadow shapes, but there's light shapes too. So right. I, I don't talk about shapes in this moment because i always try to uh to go in the the contrast uh, okay. stuff and the, the the concept of contrast so if if we see something it's because there are some contrast on it there is um the shape of uh, that bottle for example and then the bottles ends why why can i see that the bottles is no longer the bottle because there is a contrast mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. I, I mean I, I don't know if it makes sense it does, in absolutely. English, but <laughs> okay so um so drawing without drawing drawing without describing because mm -hmm. there are no lines and 
So we, we are not uh, obliged to, to draw lines to describe something. And to draw in, in that way is 1,000 times faster than drawing with lines. Because if you have to draw, um, uh, you know, the, if you have to draw the grass, but no, the grass, no, is not the, the good example. But if you have to draw the, the leaves on the tree, you, with your with your pen, that's true. With your brush, yeah. you are going to do it, ta, 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 ta. and with with the line, you have to describe the shape of the leaf. That's true. Yeah. So, okay, and so the, the this kind of approach lets you uh, draw without drawing. Because if you if you go ahead go go ahead I think there is another uh, yes this one with the mountain for example okay mm -hmm. so th this one I think is the only one that comes from my imagination but I stayed that that day I I was in a boat for like ten hours in the in the river so. It's I from memory, in, in my kind mind. of. I, yeah. Yes, it's from memory. Sorry, it's from memory. And this is a very useful example of what I was saying before, because we see rocks and we see trees just because our experience as human beings in this world let us understand that there are trees and rocks. But I didn't draw, I didn't draw any rocks or or trees. Mm -hmm. It's just texture. So now you can understand that everything is a texture, basically. Right. So you can, you can draw a forest or you can draw a mountains, just remembering the impression of the mountain and the impression you have in your memory of the forest, mm -hmm. the kind of contrast uh, a forest has. So how to use the the pens the the pen the brush? You use the brush in different ways, and you create different texture that, at uh, at the end of the drawing, will look as a forest or will look as a rock. But you didn't draw any any tree or any leaves or any rock in particular. It's just because shapes plus texture plus the position on the landscape there is equal that thing that you already know as human being. Hmm. That's it, great. It makes man. sense. People should be paying for this right now. <laughs> giving it away for free. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to, can I pick out a couple I want you to maybe talk about? I, I mean, I don't yeah, know sure. if you have a lot to say, but I love the figurative stuff like this one. These sure. two are two of my favorites right here. And what, mm -hmm. what I really like about it, is well let me put it this way what really impresses me about it is they're very complex things to draw like you're getting some serious yes. perspective going there with a figure well the there is another thing that i discovered when i was a, a child when when i was uh when i get into the the art school at first when i was 13 that people used to uh, have now uh, used to find way more complex to to copy from real life mm -hmm. than copying from a photograph, for example. Mm -hmm. And for me, this was impossible because I uh, well, I I've been drawing all my life, but it's just about looking at something and drawing it. So if it's a photo of it's of it, of it is in in real life it it's the exactly same thing right so you were you were saying that this is a perspective stuff no perspective drawing mm -hmm. but what is perspective right <laughs> yeah, i see where you're going with this yeah it doesn't make sense and right. i i tell you why because uh, a camera a, a pot, uh, you know camera mm -hmm. it's not an intelligent uh, object right but the, 
that a camera can take a picture of everything. Including really so, complex perspective. Yes. So if I am a camera, if I'm a scanner, I can draw everything. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's on a photo or if it's uh, a very complex uh, architecture. It's the exactly the same thing. It mm -hmm. will only take more time to to draw it. To draw mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But uh, so if you are saying, "Ah, oh, you're very good at portrait," or oh, "You're very good at perspective," or "You're very good at I don't know copying and other stuff," if I copy it from uh, if it's not from imagination if it's not from memory basically is the same thing perspective or portrait or anything else it's just observing yeah can yeah i feel like i'm talking to myself in the italian form here so because <laughs> yeah. this is stuff i say to my students all the time because every now and then i'll get a student that says i just really i'm really good at faces but i can't draw hands and I'll say yeah. to them, there is no difference between a face, a Only hand, sure. a house, a dog, a leaf, Only a rock. Sure. Like it's just value patterns. It's just shapes, sure. right? And sure. uh, what? But here's the here's the disclaimer: certain things are more revealing of your weaknesses, right? Certain Absolutely. subjects will reveal that you don't draw as well as you do. And when it comes to perspective. If you get an angle slightly wrong because your observational skills are not so refined, then that mm -hmm. drawing that has complex perspective will all of a sudden reveal that you're not so hot at drawing. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. That's Absolutely. the disclaimer. Yeah. It's true that everything is the same, right? It's just all just observation, but some things sure. are revealing. Sure. Yeah. And this is revealing that you see very accurately. Let's go to your more um, larger works, your more significant works. Um, yes. So one question I have about, I've always wondered, because when I discovered this, uh, uh, what is it, water charcoal or liquid or liquid graphite? Is that what you call it? Well, it, uh, um, there is a brand that uh, call it watercolor graphite. Watercolor graphite. But yeah. Yeah, but I I always try to let everything know that uh, everyone know that uh, graphite. If if you take graphite powder, you can solve you can pour it in in water, and the result is absolutely the same. It's not another material. Mm. It's not another stuff. Not another tool. It's just graphite with water. Okay. So um, you 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 have. You don't have to buy something specific that is called watercolor graphite. Right, the, right. The graphite already can be poured in in water and, and use it with a, with a brush. So what I want to know though, I didn't. I you, I think I think. I'm trying. I'm you know I'm trying to actually think back, but I think you're the first one who I ever saw use this medium, and I was floored because you're using it in such an unbelievably creative way and how you just let the medium be the medium. And then, and mm. then in certain areas you get to an, in this case, you get to an almost hyper realist level of yes. rendering. O almost. almost, almost not quite, but almost. And it's, but the, the, the juxtaposition of this painterly loose, unfinished brushwork, with this beautiful draftsmanship on the other side is just incredible. How did you stumble on this? I mean, what was your inspiration for it? Well, um, I was experimenting. I, I remember very, very clear when the first time, because I was just experimenting with graphite and other stuff. And a friend of mine, um, Give um, offers me a, a, as a gift this watercolor graphite from Viarco is the is a brand is a Portuguese brand, and so I tried it with the with the brush and some water, and I've seen that there were some some potential. I I don't know what what I, I didn't knew what what I was doing, but uh, I tried to just draw over the, the stain, the, the, the stain is correct. Yep. Stain? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. 
and I saw that I can manipulate the stain and so prepare the, the, the paper before to draw and then play with the shapes. So uh, it, it's basically how to make, how to mix uh, paintings and drawings. Mm -hmm. I love to draw and uh, some, something more liquid allowed me to to go to another level of um i don't know the of, of works uh, mm -hmm. another another category of works yeah i, I would say yeah so <clears throat> tell me a little bit about the process with this um are you waiting for it to dry for a long time oh, yeah. when between washes or do you work right well, into i it? i always so yes, I, I always wait that the, the paper dries because if you, if you don't wait, it's, it's basically impossible to draw because the, the, the pencil, the graphite pencil is not going to work. Mm. Uh, but, uh, well, it, so it, it really, with this kind of works with where, where you use a lot of water uh, and for, because of you are going to use the paper to draw with a with a pencil later you have to be sure that uh, that you are using the, the the right paper so i i experimented with all the papers on the market i think mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. and so i used to to buy three three hundred gram uh, gra three hundred grams it's yeah correct yeah Okay. We call it, we, well, we have pound, we have pound here, but I mean, it might be different. Okay. So it's 300 GSM in here. Okay. But, um, so heavy paper, watercolor paper, standard watercolor paper thickness. And th this one in particular is on a paper called, uh, Scholler. Scholler. I don't know if you are. Yeah. How do you spell it? it? Scholler. So S. C H O E L L O E R. Okay, Sorry. I haven't even, so I don't think a, I've even heard of it. It's uh, it's from Germany, and it's a um, uh, cartiera in Italiano, where they produce paper. Hmm. Uh, I don't know how to say it in, in English, but from from Germany, and they they do normal paper. And they all they do also this kind of paper that is cardboard. Cardboard. It's a two millimeter, is a two millimeter cardboard with their paper on top. Is that what you did? The one I bought from you on? I was wondering. Exactly. Exactly. It, it, I thought it was illustration board when I got it in the mail. No, no, it's cardboard with paper on top. No, kidding. mounted on top. Okay. Yes. And so this kind of paper is so good, so so funny to it's very funny to work with uh, with water because it's, um, it's almost waterproof, and so it allows you to to change your opinion and erase a bit and then go back and then retry. It's not like normal paper that will um uh, we'll drink all your water with pigment and all the stuff and uh you, you can be you can go back anymore so you so can erase it, you can erase the watercolor not really oh. not really but it's the paper that you can erase the most okay okay so right better than no, most. No. yes so for example the 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 white spots that you you can see here in, in these drawings yeah it's the it, it's the paper i have not drawn it in, uh, in in that parts it's impossible to go back and have that kind of of uh, of white but you probably could of erase down paper. to like this highlight maybe i mean yes yes exactly okay exactly. okay exactly. yes so uh when i tried the, the this medium this tool i I, I tried basically to, to mix painting with drawings and to, to, but still trying to, to feeling the, both of them, 
to think that there was a painted part and a drawed part with pencil and with brush. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just unbelievable. Quite... I wish I, I say this to a lot of my guests, but I wish I could own all of your work. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> and this is all on the same paper that you mentioned. No, 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 absolutely. No, no. Oh, it's not. Uh, this one. Oh, this here one it is. is still Scholler, but yeah, this one is still Scholler, but, but it's paper, normal paper, normal and paper. Okay. The other, yes. The, the other one, the, the, this one is Fabriano. You, you know, Fab yeah. Fabriano, it's artistico. Yes, okay, yeah, sure, sure. No, not artistico. I don't like the artistico because it does, um, have, um, a texture that I don't like. It's too, like it's 100% cotton. Yeah. It looks and like it's, it's a machine, very... like it's digital texture, kind of. W which one? The Artistico. I don't like it that much either because it feels almost like an like a like a digital like a robot made the texture. Like it doesn't feel natural, like a natural texture. Okay, so uh, I can understand very clearly what what you are saying. Yeah. And unfortunately, I can say that this paper that we are looking at, it's it's not the Fabriano Artistico. Uh, so 100% cotton is the F5, which is 50% uh, cotton. Okay, so it, it's a bit harder. Okay, it's a bit harder than than the other that is a very, very smooth. But I tried one time to to use a lot of graphite on the artistico, and when you have a big surface covered with graphite, you you can see not so clearly, but um, if you are a bit nerd like like us, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can you can see them. There are a lot of circles on the paper. Oh, no kidding. Yes, and I didn't like it, so Huh. I wonder first what a, and, and last time. I wonder the what in the manufacturing process causes that. Yes. I, I don't know. I don't know about that's strange. It's like that. And you know when my, my work is a lot about low contrast. Right. A lot of low contrast. And when that uh, texture of the paper became another contrast. I don't like it. Right, right. Uh, so it accepts charcoal this without one those is circles. Just... I don't me? know if you've tried charcoal, but it accepts charcoal, and I've never noticed those circles. But I agree with you with Artistico. I don't like graphite either on it. Mm. Yes, yeah. there are other papers. There are the Sanders Waterford too. Very good. Which one? Can you spell that one? Sorry, <laughs> make you keep spelling stuff. Saunders. Oh, Saunders. S. Saunders Waterford. Yes. Okay, Waterford. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, this one is still the the cardboard. They're just really cool. And so I want to pull this up. This one is gesso. This one here. The other one wasn't. No, the other one. The the, mm, the one before. Yes, yeah, this one is on gesso, and there is some oil too. So that's the thing about artists like you that I'm envious of. Well, there's a lot of things about artists like you that I'm envious of, but one of them is you're just bold with your experimentation. And I, um, uh, it just amazes me every time I see you post something, I ask myself, how did you like, how did you, when you wake up one morning and like, I'm going to draw a caterpillar, like what? And then somehow you made it into this incredible thing that I want to own. And I'm like, I never would have even thought to draw a caterpillar. <laughs> How does your brain well, work? <laughs> well, what, one thing you have to know is that uh, on the Instagram, you are seeing uh, one, no, 10% of my drawings. Oh, okay. So okay. So some I, of them fail. So, yeah. No, no, it's not like that. Okay. But it's, for example, talking about this caterpillar. Yeah, you, you you see, you can see that I have other animals around. Yeah, no? yeah. The, okay, so th this one is a huge project that I'm working on since years, <laughs> and uh, and 
I'm basic. I'm doing a, a collection of drawing, a natural drawing, naturalistic drawing. So um, I I spend days and days working working only on naturalistic drawings of about animals and and plants and okay. everything. Okay. So so it's all part of a larger project. So it's not like you're reinventing yes. the wheel every morning. You've got a set. You've got no, a set goal. No. Like I'm, 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 illustrating animals from all over the world. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm very. Uh, I love to draw. To draw series, series collection, and to, to cut. To do catalogation of stuff. To. So a lot of drawing like that. A lot of drawing like that. A lot of animals, a lot of uh, dead techniques, mm -hmm. and I, I love to to see them one side by side with the other one. No. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if, if it sounds so, where are you getting your reference? Because I know a lot of these animals aren't in Italy, like the bison, for no, example, I, is not in Italy. Okay, so th this is very difficult because I have seen a lot of uh, documentaries. Yeah. And I still look at videos, uh, more videos than photos. Okay. And every every animal or mushroom or other natural stuff you you can see from from me is always a reinterpretation of a picture. It's never that photo or that video. I right. don't like to. I don't like to draw that stuff, that, that photo that I've seen on the internet. Right. I, I don't even know who who take who took the, that photo. So it, it's always uh, a reinterpretation of of something I've seen. Right. And I always try to 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 let to to to, to achieve the the best silhouette I can I can have to best describe the animals or the, the subject in general. Mm. So yeah, I, and that's obvious. To... It's obvious you're not just copying yes. photos because they're very yeah. they they you have your own um signature in your work. Everything you well, do it, looks it, like you, you know. Well it, I think that is because I if if there is one thing that I hate in drawings, for, I mean, for, for me, yeah, is that the, the drawing smells, the drawing looks like a photo. Yeah. Or yeah. the worst it can be that looks like a photo bashing, that it's uh, the worst, uh, <laughs> yeah, the worst no. ever thing. Because I am. Um, if I want to to take a picture, I take a picture. If I want to draw to draw something, I will do a drawing, and it has to be separated. Right. I tried yeah. one time. I tried one time to do a hyperrealistic drawing, and I was doing it. It it looked like a photo, and at half halfway of the drawing, I was doing it, and I've said to myself, "Okay, stop." I absolutely not interested on in, in this. I was saying that uh, I took a, a picture of my friend and I was drawing it and okay, the, it, it's my friend. It's hyper realistic and he's looking at me. Okay, and then uh, what what I'm doing? Yeah, I already know what I'm doing because there is a photo that can prove that I know what I'm doing. So <laughs> why I'm doing that? I already know how is going to be. Why I'm drawing this? I don't I can understand it photo, either. I, I can put the photo on Photoshop and then put it on the grayscale and ah, this is how my drawing look like will look like. So what? Uh, why I'm spending <laughs> th this amount of time on this to achieve what? Right. So, to repeat something uh, that's already been done, right? To to yeah, to so, create something that's already in front of you. No, yeah, I'm with so, you 100 percent on that. It's funny because I just. Recently commented on somebody's uh, post. I wish I remember who it was. It was an artist that I also respect that had similar sentiment about this subject. Anyway, I don't remember exactly what I'd said, but my thoughts were that my experience is that going hyper-realist is the easy solution 
because you know you'll be successful. You just get it exactly like you see it, which isn't that difficult. It'll be, oh, it'll, geez. it'll look right. But what's really hard is to make beautiful marks because the, sure. it's open ended. You like, there's no objective solution, and you could. And it's very difficult to yourself. settle on something. Yes, you, it's the, the signature of a uh, draftman of an artist is the the the, the marks, mm -hmm. the, uh, il segno in Italiano. Mm. In Italian. Yeah. So, so speaking yeah, of marks, speaking of marks. So you get up one morning. <laughs> I'm going to say this a lot with you because I'm just mind blown. You get up one morning and you decide. Today, I'm going to move away from graphite and charcoal and water graphite, and I'm going to just, what is this, like ballpoint pen? And, and This is a marker. A, marker. I'm just going to take a marker and scribble this gorgeous eel on this huge piece of paper. And what, yeah. I mean, I could, I'm trying to try to explain to me how you think. <laughs> like, like today, I'm going to spend an entire day or a week or whatever just scribbling with a marker. When you know you well, can do this it, other thing well, what motivates yes, you to yes. completely jump across the art the 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 art supply store and go for the markers one day? You know. Well, uh, one thing I love I've learned about myself is that for being um, peaceful and uh, tranquil. Uh, uh calm yeah in my studio is that i i have to know that i have everything for working on every idea i can have so i have all the markers i need i have all the paper i need i have everything in my studio so if i want to do a giant hill i do a giant hill so i take the paper take the sheet of paper i mount it on the on the table and then i draw so it's 30 seconds between I want to do it, I do it. So th this is very important for me. So let me understand you allows me correctly. So what you're saying is that you have collected a huge range of art materials, yes, which, which allows you yes. to experiment at will quickly and exactly. conveniently. Okay. Exactly. Huge. And... So yes, because I, the the thing that I, I I think that the 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 thing that I love the, the much about drawings is solve problems. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's it's always about solve the problems. It's always about uh, am I capable to do something that I like because I don't care about the others zero percent. Uh, am I able to to draw a wheel on that style or on that way that I'm imagining, and to achieve a result that I will like? So this is the the answer and uh, the 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 question. And let's find the answer. Let let's find if if I can do a a wheel um, more graphical than the other my drawings, more about silhouettes, more about volumes. And just with one marker, and let's try. And this is the result. The, there is no sketch. This is the sketch. This is the alla prima, you know. It, it, I was going to ask just, you that. So you didn't use yes. any pencil, graphite to no, lay in? No, no, no. No, no, no. It's not fun. It, it's always about fun to draw for me. It's not, mm -hmm. and well, yeah, it's always about being have fun. And to draw a, a drawing like this with a trace with a with a sketch preliminary sketch is not fun to me <laughs> this is not this is not client work this is my personal work and my personal work is for having fun you know okay it's for me i gotta i want to come back to that for a sec i want to talk about the difference between client work and personal work but i do multi-figure painting you know and i've looked at over throughout history and they do all this many artists do all this prep work you know yes. color studies and then medium-sized little studies and then medium-sized studies and then separate figure studies and i do what i have to do but I do as little as possible and try and work just on the painting itself for the exact same reason. 
It's like, yes. I just don't, I, it's just the, the prep stuff is so miserable. I just want to get to the fun stuff exactly. and just start painting and not have to lay it in, which is why I've avoided watercolor because I know mm. that there's this whole, I mean, if to do realism, at least for most of us, we would have to be very careful to lay in a careful drawing underneath and then do the watercolor. Um, yes. I'm not, for, for I just me, don't want to do that. For me, it's the opposite. With, with, with watercolors, I feel totally free to do anything. That's because you're a great mm. draftsman. You just go for it. <laughs> do you have examples of watercolors in here? I mean, I guess you're gra uh, you're, you're, um, try in Behance, Behance maybe? Behance? Try open Behance. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you, even in your watercolors, you don't, you don't do preparatory studies no, at never. all. No, no. Uh, I, I think that I'm I'm doing preparatory drawings for my personal personal work just on some of my naturalistic drawings with graphite because I I was I'm trying to say to myself that this um, kind of the, the, this research is not going to finish if I'm not doing this more methodically. So right, right. Do the sketch then do the final work and then okay another one because i have tons of of, of drawings to do right so right so yes. where did you say to go is it in this category be, uh, be, no be, be hence it's a um, website be hence okay so yeah here we go yeah, yeah so yeah so maybe no. maybe i'm just a chicken maybe i should try it this is from 10 years ago i think Maybe I should try it. Yes, it's very. So this is totally just straight into it with watercolor, no pencil whatsoever. Yes, watercolor. Beautiful. I didn't realize you'd done these. I don't know how I missed that. Yeah, well, these, are, these are gorgeous. Ten years I really ago, like I this. Think. Okay. Yeah, those are cool. Those are really it's, cool. Right, try, try. All right. So tell me about what you had said earlier. You, uh, you know, you've got your fun work and your professional work. What is the difference? What, what work is considered professional and what work is okay. considered fun? Well, uh, I think that um, unlike the, because I, I listen to, to a lot of your podcasts from the Undraped Artist. And I thought that uh, I, unlike the other people you have interviewed, uh, I don't consider myself as uh, a, a, a professional artist. No. Because okay. it's, uh, well, it, I have to say that in high school, I became allergic to the word artist, oh. to the concept <laughs> of being a, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Really, I, I really have some issues about, about that because I totally hated the, the, um, the teaching method, teaching method, <laughs> mm -hmm. not that there were no teaching methods in high school. So, um, I, I basically closed my my mind and i started to 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 to, to find my way alone mm -hmm. without listen to anyone uh, i thought that going to high school here in because the the high school of milan is the accademia di belle arti di brera which is the, very very well known in in, in Italy, for sure, but in Europe and I think in in the US too. But when I was there, it, it the, the art was contemporary art. Uh, everything has to be very conceptual. And I just wanted to to draw, to to create something that I like, not that they like. So my teachers didn't like the same stuff I liked. So I basically 
turn off my brain when I was in class and I was doing everything alone at home, almost never in class. And so it was, everything was about uh, galleries, be an artist and show your works to people that can take you to do exhibition in galleries and uh, talking, thinking about the profit and thinking about all that kind of stuff. And finally have some money from your work. But the fact is that I started, I started working with drawing when I was 16. I was in the, in the college when, when I started working and earn money from, from drawing. I started drawing with, uh, well, uh, working for, uh, an online game, mm -hmm. uh, about cardboard, uh, card, uh, about the game was about sailboat. So I do my drawings in paper, I scan them. Then I already have a, a graphic tablet and, and then I color it in Photoshop, color them in Photoshop, and then I deliver it to, to the client. And it was a huge work. I, I was pretty, pretty young, but so I, I was 16 and then in high school, I was 21. So it, it has been five or six years that I was already earning money from my, from my mm. profession of draftman. So I, I was not interested on that side of the work of that side of the teaching. I don't want to, to draw because, uh, I will make some profit. I will make some money from my drawing. I just want to draw for me is the only thing that it's important to me to have fun, to do this thing that is my main, main passion. So, uh, I have my personal drawings, my personal works that are mm, my life. I don't know. I, I wake up in the morning and it's what I do uh, every day. And there is my client's works that is just for them. And the, most of the times you are not going to see them because mm. I work a lot for advertising, for example, a lot ah, in okay. Milan, in, in, in Milan, we have a lot of advertising, a lot. Um, every three people, there's some, someone that is working for advertising and, um, so, uh, I, I spend most of my time, not most of my time, but the time I spend with the client's work, most of the time is something that you are not going to see and mm. I'm going to, uh, to forget the day before the, the day after, sorry. Right. <laughs> because it, it's not, uh, it's not something you have to watch. I, I, I work for, uh, pre-production. I used to work in pre-production phase. So I used to visualize the setting of, uh, advertising of a spot or of a movie. Or um, I have to draw uh, anything else, and, and how a website will looks like with that illustration on top. Uh, they they use me as a a visualizer. Mm -hmm. I I've done a lot of storyboards too in my life, but uh, I quit mm -hmm. after many years of storyboard. I quit, and so I I always worked with my with my passion but my passion still remains in other kind of drawings so uh and then there are other client works that there are more very a lot more fun and a lot more interesting to do so it's more about collaboration for example i did some collaboration with uh nike or disney or some magazines 
and when you know you, you know when when you when they ask for you because they like your style because you they like what you do mm -hmm. and so they they ask you to do that thing and so this is very fun i i used to treat that that kind of of commission as a personal work personal work most of the time and this is very good but sometimes is collaboration sometimes it's just commission because they have to visualize something right and, and it's i don't know it's like that so the the fun fact is that if you see a drawing from me it's it's not it, it doesn't came from uh, I don't know how to say because I, I was saying before that I'm not as the the other artist you interviewed before because most of them that I have seen are working and earning money on their work as artist. Um, I I don't know how to say they don't have personal of. Uh, or clients right. work in, in this way. Right. It's not compartmentalized. Yeah, exactly. So I have advertising works that is awful most of the time. <laughs> and yes, because I hate advertising, but it's, it's, it it's, pays the it's bill. Perfect. Yeah. It's perfect to, to hate advertising because there is no stress, absolutely no stress. It, oh, quite relaxing because I'm, I'm not going to do something that, uh, oh no, it's not very, uh, not, not very nice. It's, it just have to be good. It just have to be well done. Correct. So I'm, I'm able to do something correct. Perfect. No problem. If it doesn't, it doesn't have to be nice. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't have to be nice, it's 10,000 easier. You know, you understand what I mean? I do. Yep. Yep. You yep. have a you have a clear goal that the advertising agency gives yes. you. And if you reach the goal, you're good. Yes. So I, I don't work with my drawings. I work for clients doing drawings. It's uh, a bit different. But it's you do bit, sell uh, some of your work. I mean, you've sold to me. I looked sure, at you sell sure, a lot of prints. Sure. I've noticed you've sold out oh. a bunch of prints. So yes, uh, I, I sometimes I sell my my drawings for mm -hmm. my works. I, I have people that mail me. To, oh, I would like to have something for you or that pieces in particular, and I, I sold them. Sure, as I have done with you. Right, but uh, it's not my goal. Right, right, and uh, m maybe because I don't have. A family, or I don't have a child. <laughs> right, right. Well, I, it's. I, earn... I think a lot of the people. Yeah, I. I mean, I think all of us as uh, painters who do make money solely on our paintings. Um. Hopefully, it's not our goal either. It's just that we get really scared if they don't sell. <laughs> Yes. But but we try we try and paint we try and paint without thinking. I mean, I can't speak for everybody else, but I personally try and think I try and paint without thinking about the sale. But then if it doesn't sell, well then yeah, then it gets a little scary at that point because sure. there's no job. But what tell me about the artist thing though. I'm I'm curious about that. Um so you have kind of a bad taste in your mouth for the word artist or you just don't see yourself as an artist? Or, uh, and, and earlier no. when I said you're a draftsman, you're like, yes, yes, I'm a draftsman. <laughs> it's like you, <laughs> you have a certain self image. Tell me. <laughs> Don't call me an artist, sure. man. I'm a draftsman. Well, no, no, no. Well, it, I, I know I have to fix that part of my brain because <laughs> it, it's, it's totally normal. And the word artist is totally correct to describe me. Right. Because if I have, if I have to, to talk with uh, with someone, for example, in in, Eng in English speaking, I have to use artist as a definition of myself because it's the absolutely correct word. 
but in Italy with artista. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why I I just can't because I don't know maybe for high school maybe for <laughs> is it that is it that artist has just got a negative connotation to it because of artists that you've seen in your environment that you don't necessarily see yourself as one of them is that what you're yeah. saying uh yes but particularly for uh, particularly because of my uh my my high school period because okay. uh um for example i i learned for the that there were other artists painter alive uh, that i loved for from spanish people in erasmus you know the the word erasmus not it's, sure no. no when erasmus erasmus is um when when for example i'm in italy and i will do one year in a in high school in spain okay so it calls okay it's erasmus studying well, abroad to be, we see, would... studying abroad, it's studying abroad. Yeah. um so there were this um uh, these people from Spain in my class that were uh, absolutely used to to paint all the time in their class in Spain that came in my class in high school and they were like, uh, what is going on here? Uh, we are searching for the painting class. And I was like, hmm. So uh, we are the painting class, and they were like, uh, w- "Where are the people painting?" And well, I am painting, and he are paint. Uh, he's painting, but the others are not interested in painting. Okay, so what are you? What are we going to do? Uh, and the answer were was uh what do you want to do you can do it and then you can present what have you done as your final work uh, for the the semester and this was the painting class i hmm. i can i can trust me you can do academy of fine arts of brera or well maybe not today but where i was there without drawings and it's fine you can huh. so you, you can do it without drawings without painting so just, are you suggesting that they had no instruction at all they just say do what you want and turn it in at the end exactly yes <laughs> so you have so you kind of have a sour taste in your mouth for the word artist because you associate artists with that sort of mentality yes exactly right it's right because of that so uh, as I was saying uh, before, uh, I learned by these uh, friends, Spanish friends, about uh, modern day contemporary painters. And I didn't know that there, there, were, there still were some painters that I, will, that I can love. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how to say. So, as an example, I don't know, uh, Nicola Samori. Mm-hmm. Do you know Nicola? Are you familiar with uh, his work, Samori? Nicola? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look him up. Well, or, mm, I don't know, um, Antonio Lopez, Antonio oh, Garcia yes. Lopez. Yes, I or, know Antonio Lopez. Or, or Golucho. Oh, God, uh, I love Golucho. Yeah. You know, as a, mm, as a draftman, Imagine me at, in high school when I saw Golucho for the first time. I was like, oh, uh, wait, when, from which period he, the, this painter is? No, no, he's still alive. He's working now. And he's not what? that old either. <laughs> he's not that old. So, okay. <laughs> and they show me a ton of painters that I, I didn't know. Yeah. So uh started to to paint too with oil paintings and 
to to open my my mind to to this kind of new inputs so it's it's very strange it's very strange if you go in a in a in the class of painting in academy of arts in in spain you will have 100 easels with painters painting whatever but they are going to paint mm -hmm. if you go in milan no easels it's okay uh, no problem it's a painting class but you are not you are not uh, forced to paint if you don't want to paint because it's an art class. But you know, everyone I interview though, I mean, I just inter interviewed uh, Sean Lay in Australia. He says the same thing. I interviewed yes. I inter uh, Connor Walton in Ireland. He says mm -hmm. the same thing. America is the same way. You can't go to a public school in America without getting a bunch of people peeing on canvases, like yes. and calling it art. So it's like, it's everywhere. Um, but apparently Italy's kind of extreme because you're right. I can't think of another Italian painter right now. I got know there's got to be one out there. Well, Nicola Samori, I can tell you. Nicola okay. Samori, it's a, it's a great painter. And, well, I, I have uh, friends that are great painters too. And there are a lot of Italian great painters. But you, 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 if you try to think as you can think about the Spanish style, uh, the Spanish style of brushes and oh brush yeah, it's very and, obvious. Or yeah. okay, the Russian, okay, that that kind of stuff, that kind of subject, that kind of uh, composition, okay, Americans or uh, wait, wait, South wait, Americans. I or, want to talk about the American. Can you see a pattern with America? Uh, not, uh, not uh, always. Okay. But yes, not always, really? but yes. What is the, yes. can you describe that to me? Because being an American, I well, don't see it, but. Well, so first of all, first of all, you have to, to think in the inverse is, is a word. Yeah, inverse? that's right. Yeah. Inverse way. So if it's not Italian, Spanish, Russian, French, uh, so it can be. Uh, okay. American. So it's everything but those things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The other, the other side. Uh, of the um, of, of what I think is that it's um, it's very um, based on on colors on study of colors almost uh, like it was a uh, concept uh, art mm. sometimes I don't know if I can say it uh, in a good way but uh, uh, well, the subject, a lot of the subject, because the American houses, the United States houses, or barns, or fields, or mountains, they are right. pretty particular. Uh, so, okay, okay. So the landscape yes. and architecture sort of define it too. Yeah, la landscape and architecture a lot. Right. But the um, the the colors too, the the palette. Right. The palette too, colors too. No yes. kidding. I want to look it's, more carefully. I like that inverse argument. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The, you have a super palette. I, I don't know. It, because do, do you think that a lot of American painters, for example, uh, paint with the, with the Zorn palette? Well, that's why I, that, that's, that's why I was, not sure what you meant because to me from my perspective inside america there's like all of these different schools that exactly. are doing their own thing so yes i do know a lot of artists that paint with what we call limited palettes some of them are limited zorin palettes some of them are some variation of the zorin palette but then like i am one of those people you describe that's really colorist and really about color yeah and well, you know well, like well. uh kwang ho is about color and adrian stein's about color and I mean, there's a lot of these others sure. that are really color oriented. I mean, you get, so we, you get all ends of the spectrum and then, you know, some others, uh, who was it? Um, Beth Ann Moran Hanslick looks Russian to me, <laughs> you know, it's like, yes, a bit, yeah, a a bit, bit Russian. The, uh, yeah. So colder because I, I think that in her case is because of the co cold, uh, cold, it's correct. Cold, cold colors. Tones. Yeah. Yes, color tones. Cold, well, I, 
Ah, I think you're right. I didn't even put it to that me. together that way. Yeah. Just to me. I don't know. No, I think you're right. It's also her brushwork a little bit too, but I think anyway. Um, so to me, it's, I feel like uh, America, like it's food is, is this melting pot where we're all just kind of picking at the rest of the world. Like we like a little bit of Italy. We like a little bit of Spain. We like a little bit of Russia. We like a little bit of this mm -hmm. and that, you know, and, and we're all just sort of, you know, you know not one thing, right? So mm -hmm. that's why and that inverse argument makes makes sense to yeah. me. I'm like, okay, I get it. I it's get it. The, the, the best way to to to, this, to recognize the an American painter, I think it's the inverse. Yeah, that makes sense. So another thought I had, you know, with the artist thing is I've always been, you know, I say artist on my Instagram because that's what people know. Like, as you said, it does define technically what I do, but I've always struggled with the word for a different reason because I find it pretentious to call yourself an artist because okay. it's it's like sure. saying I am good at this. Sure. You know, uh, you know, I I was wondering if in in your country was like that because in here is absolutely like that. If you call yourself an artist, it's like okay, he's an artist, okay. It's like, yeah. mm, wow. Sure you are. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, and, and I always um, think that maybe in your country is a more um, normal word to say. Like, I'm a plumber. I'm an artist. I'm no, like, no, like no. This. I'm not no. sure what okay. you mean by by the way you express that. I'm not exactly sure how people perceive mm. artists there. But what I, what my experience is when I say that I'm an artist, which I usually don't, I usually say I'm a painter and then they say, oh, can you paint my house? And then I say, okay, well, not that kind of painter, but, yes. <laughs> but, um, so then I end up having to use the word artist anyway. And then I get, oh, so what does your wife do? Or so what do you do for work though? You know, it's like, so that's usually the follow-up sure. question because in, in the United States, <clears throat> people think artists are losers. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least sure. that's been my, that's been my experience, you know, or they think we're dumb, you know, um, mm -hmm. that's been my experience. I remember sitting one time in a meeting and, uh, we, there was a person that we were discussing that needed help with their car and, or no, it wasn't mm -hmm. with their car. It was like their front porch was broken or something. And I'm really good with my hands. I make lots of things, but they don't know that. They just know I'm an, an artist, right? So I said, yeah, sure. oh, I'll go over there and I'll fix her porch. And everyone laughed and said, oh, sure, we're going to send the artist to fix her porch. That's not a good idea. <laughs> I was like, are you freaking kidding me? You guys think I'm a complete moron because I'm an artist. Sure. Oh, my sure. gosh. Yeah, that's that's the United States. And that's been my experience. I mean, other artists might see it differently, but yeah. Well, uh... Is that what you I mean, or do you mean they perceive artists as being arrogant? Which is it? No, arrogant. More, more arrogant. More oh, arrogant. okay. Okay. Yes, more arrogant. No, it's not more, that way more here. More freak. Freak. No, arrogant. that's true. They they think that. Freak. Yeah. Arrogant. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know. Uh, oh, you know, I'm an artist, and they are imagining you like selling bracelet in in the in the beach. Okay, so it's not too like, different. It's not too different than yeah, the United yeah. States. No, that's the way it is here. They imagine so, you homeless here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But the other, the other problem is that I quite hate to to talk about my my work with with people that ninety percent of the time are not familiar with our work. So it's like, uh, well, what do you do? Well, I'm a Draftman, what, what about you? What do you do to, to, to <laughs> see? Me? It is the same, exactly. <laughs> oh man! Uh, ah, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm in economics. No, but, but talk to me about your work. So you're a draftman. Well, what? Do you, so the the first the first question is always. So do you do like comic books? Uh, no, I'm not a comic artist. I uh, do another, another kind of drawings, you know, while well, advertising and 
uh, I do a lot of portrait too, and <laughs> and then the more you talk, the more the more crazy they think you are because yeah. you start sounding more and more like an artist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, that's too funny. <laughs> No, well, for here, here we get it's a it's the it's these extremes. So I find that they think you're a moron until you're in the right crowd, and if you're among the right people, collectors, people who appreciate the arts, then they mm -hmm. respect you. But for the average Joe, they assume you're a moron. So they, you know, it's so it's not across the board. It's it's uh, just depends on the environment in the United States. At least that's my experience. Yeah, so. Sure. So, so what's next for you? I mean, do you, you're working on this animal series. Is there, are there yes. other series you're working on and what, what do you have planned for the future? Well, my, my big problem, I think is that I, I love to draw in series and this is quite a problem because if I'm doing a drawing and then to, to think that the drawing is complete. I have to do three more drawings to compare with that drawings and make a series. Oh, so it take a lot of time and I always want to do series always. Why do you, why and is that? that? What is, what do you think? Well, for, as an example, um, if you go to my website mm -hmm. and you open the nebula, the, you know, the, this collection of drawings where the 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 drawings that i have, have been doing for an exhibition for my first solo exhibition here in milan and so you are working as a fine artist as well then yes yeah, sometimes sometimes okay yes and i have done just one solo solo exhibition in my life but i've done i've did i I've done a lot of uh, um, gallery work, group exhibition, group, okay. even in the in the US too, or in Germany, or in Spain, or in Italy. And, and I've done a lot of things. Okay. But as an example, if you open the the spray, the sprite, the, yes, uh, no spr uh, spray, spray bottle, the, okay, the spray bottle, yes, okay, not this one, but the other, okay, okay. This one is the first one of the series. Okay. And so even if the other are more complex and with human figures and um, scenarios and stuff like that are more impressive maybe, this little spray bottle is the first of the series and is the, the reason why I started this series. No, it's because, making sense to me. So it's not always a subject series. Sometimes it's like it, you discover a technique and you want to flesh it out. Yeah, it's not just technique. It's it's a bit more more deep. Be the the deeper thought because uh, when I saw that I I I were I was able to to draw a spray in um, i don't know in an hour uh i i have the, the spray in front of me and i said to myself okay let, let's try this technique let's try to that stuff that i have in my mind and let's see what happens so i start, started drawing this and one hour later uh the drawing were finished and i really thought well, mm, I like it. Yeah, it's I, cool. I like the I like this drawing and the 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 first the first question that I always um, that I always think about it about is why I like it, and the the answer was that even if it was a really common sprite bottle i could perceive some dramatic energy i don't know some some atmosphere mm -hmm. I, I i wanted to draw the sprite bottle but i finished drawing the atmosphere around the, the sprite bottle so i mean for, to me right this is what right. appears to me 
So uh, I thought, but okay, if if I have been successful with with uh, a spray bottle, maybe I can do something more uh, more rich, more articulate, more uh, more difficult too, like as a human person or um, other subjects. So I started to do other subjects, and what what was in my mind was trying to recreate and recreate better th this kind of atmosphere. So from that drawing, I started drawing atmosphere. And uh, the subject was important, but not so important. I don't know uh, if it mm -hmm. sounds... No, it's, it's definitely about more than the subject. It's like the subject yes, is just a device to create a composition. Yes, to create a composition and, well, it, it, it's about the subject too, obviously. But uh, I, I, I thought that the, this kind of atmosphere was, uh, the, the, can, could vehicle, I don't know, it could, could represent the, the feeling that I had in my mind. So, mm really foggy atmosphere where there is no uh, a subject or the background is all mixed up mm -hmm. we the, the the spray bottles doesn't start in a point and finish in another point is i don't know it's always is all always mixed yeah i think these so are amazing that, I always gravitate toward your and... figurative work. I mean, I love all of your work, but I just, well, I'm a portrait painter. So for good, for, for the reason that I love people painting mm -hmm. people, but so of course I'm attracted to the people, but I just, that's just so, so cool. Thank you. Okay. So you get kind of, um, a concept going in your mind and when you do it once, you just don't feel like you've finished with it. You need to keep going exactly. until you fleshed it out. Yes. Okay. Exactly. That makes sense. That makes exactly. sense. It's like that. And so, for example, I, I'm, I'm doing this animal series since, I don't know, three years. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I, I, I will be finished until other four years. <laughs> really? Well, and it gives you a lot of work I to do. Yes, uh, I, I, I want to, to make uh, hundreds of drawings to have a big collection because nature is giant, it's huge. So I think that my work with nature has to be huge too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it doesn't make sense to you. No, of course it does. But, so, yes, I, I think that... Um, it's it's because I I don't want to be a, a draft man an artist that draw animal I want to be someone that has drawn nature is it's different it's not about the bison it's not about the caterpillar it's not about that plant in particular it's about nature and my my project is about nature mm -hmm. so i want that and this is the reason why i didn't put my all my drawings in the internet okay i have i have already i don't know 60 70 drawings what are you serious that, yes a my lot, maybe gosh a lot yeah where do you keep all these and, drawings are they in drawers in your studio I have a lot of drawers. Are you serious? That's such a waste. Yeah. Although I have the same thing. People always tell me, are you going to sell that? No, it's just going in a drawer with my yes. drawings. I don't sell my drawings really. Yes. Well, so. they, they are for that, that particular project. So th these are not for sales and I don't want to show the people until I have um, enough because I wanted to show them um, together. 
to have the right perception of the works of the collection of the series, right. not as a single a singular work, as the caterpillar, for example. Sometimes I put something in the internet, but I my feeling is that if I present, if I show the people. I may be wrong, I can be wrong, but if I show people the caterpillar, the plant, and the uh, other five drawings, the result will be different than show them different drawings, maybe in different parts of the year, so not right, different right. times. Yeah. So it's it's always about a collection of work in my, in my mind. So this can be a problem because I don't set a, a deadline and this is a huge problem because I can stay with this, with this uh, project for ten years. I don't know. It it, it could happen, you know. <laughs> it's a bit scary, but <laughs> so I'm, I'm a bit scared. But uh, I'm scared, but I'm I I don't know. I'm so passionate about it. I. I, I draw every day. I since I was born, I think. I don't yeah, know. yeah. You know. Yeah. The I'm sure that people that doesn't uh, draw, that doesn't do our our work, uh, have no idea of uh, how much time we spend drawing. Uh, I have some. I have a, had a period of not weeks, not months, uh, but years, years, maybe four or five years, no more, drawings, seven day a week, 10, 12 hours a day. Wow. So yes, it's, it was like that. I, even when I have been to high school, I go to I, I I went to high school and then I stay there. I draw, and then I go back home. I draw, and and then the night uh, maybe I will draw or maybe I will go out with my friends. That that's always be a huge part of my life, going out with my friends and do stuff. But even in holidays or in Christmas time or I don't know, I, I always had my sketchbooks in my hand. Now is the from since two years, three years maybe is the period the, of my life where I'm drawing the less. I, I go to to the studio five or six days a week, and sometimes I don't draw. Sometimes I just think about stuff that I would love to do, or I see some videos about something that interests me because. Obviously, I don't have all the drawing is not my <laughs> only interest in life. I do love a lot of other stuff. Nature, for example, or plants, biology and stuff like this. Right, right. And, and technology, too. I with, with the computer has been a huge love of my life <laughs> for drawings and well drawings mostly drawings but the technical part of the computer too so i started used using photoshop for with the the 5.0 version so uh, i don't know if you are a user a uh, photoshop yeah. user but mm -hmm. okay so that's pretty I old were, yes i i was i was 14 or 13 hmm. when I started drawing on, on Photoshop with my, with the mouse. And then it was uh, always discovered the, the last plugin and the last uh, uh, stuff that Photoshop has integrated on the last version and uh, how to use it and why. And uh, I, I, I had a concept art period too. So a lot of, visual environment studies and you know video games stuff i worked on video too man video too. you don't yeah. seem old enough to have done all this stuff and you keep saying i've did this for years i did that for years yes but because i started 
uh, working at 16 yeah for that reason and you're what like 34 now 33 34 Th 33 33 yeah. so it's it's a long time and yeah. it just uh well it, as I would say, as I was saying, I, I went to the studio for years or seven days a week, uh, drawing 10, 10 hours per day. So it's a lot of time yeah, <laughs> to yeah, discover no stuff. Uh, and I, I basically, even in the, the college uh, period, high school too, obviously, but I was, I go to bed. I went to bed at uh, at two a.m. minimum, and the 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 goal was to to wake up in the morning the the earlier possible to have the the full day to have something. So wow, I I, I slept for six hours maximum for years. So how much but, of this uh, was discipline and how much of it was passion? Passion. So passion. you always, it's, you were just driven to go there because you loved it a hundred percent. Never yes, like I need exactly. to go. I should go. It was just, yes, you have exactly. to. No, no, no. It's, it's, uh, it's what I, I always try to explain to my, my friends too, because, uh, I swear I am not a hero. Uh, I'm not an hero of discipline. It's because I want to do it. I mm. want to get up early in the morning to go to the studio and do the the thing I the the thing I love to do. Mm. It's uh, as you like go to to the restaurant or go to holidays and uh, I don't know. I like to go to the studio and draw. So uh, mm. I, I or even when a drawing is particularly long to do. Oh, I don't have the the um, patience. Pa patience Passion. is the word. Yes, yeah. I don't oh, have the patience. To, patience to patience to to do this for to do something for uh, that amount of hours. Mm. And for me, it's nonsense because it's just what I love to do. It's totally normal. I don't, I don't know. It's. No, wow. did, 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 did you sound? No, I'm not that way at all. I mean, I, I no. don't, I don't live to paint and draw. Um, I do it out of discipline. Um, yeah, I mean, okay. and, yeah, you are artist at the core, man. You are. I hate, I hate to, I hate to tell you, but you might actually be an artist. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you. Oh, yeah, no, well, I, I'm I'm I not think, that I'm not uh, that passionate. I love it. Don't get me wrong, I love it, but I have to yes, force yes. myself to work sometimes. I have to because I I have to sure. I can't just waste sure. my life away. I mean, so I kind of envy yeah. you in that way. Well, uh in the other side of the of the coin, it, it, it's correct to say the other side of the coin? Yeah, yeah. No? Yeah. Okay, the other side of the coin is that I hate to do nothing. I hate to, to lay on the sofa Same. and stay there. So you can imagine that this could be a problem in relationship, for example. <laughs> oh, I don't have to imagine it. I'm married. I don't have to imagine it. <laughs> so, so what are we doing? <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Nothing is not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's funny. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, well, uh, man, it's been great talking to you. It's been an inspiration. Uh, and I, you know, well, as you I, know, I absolutely love your work. And uh, it's been an honor to get to know you. And I'm, I'm very sorry for my English speaking because I, I'm all French and I speak Spanish too. So I have basically three languages and a bit of English language too, but I'm wow. not very good at it. So I thought you were fine. I understood everything you said. So congrats. I only know English and have a small vocabulary, so I'm not going to complain. No, I, I was very scared about this, about this interview because I'm, I always in, in Italian in a, as, as a, a teacher, I always try to use the absolutely correct word to say something in my work. So 
to imagine that I'm not able to describe what is in my mind when it turned to to talk about my works, about my feelings, about my work. It's it's I don't know. It's very difficult to accept it. So uh -huh. it was very difficult to to think uh, that I would be able or not able to do this interview because people were maybe thinking that I'm not. Uh, I don't know. I Articulate. Don't know, I think you understand. Well, yeah. that's not how it's perceived. <laughs> like I know, it's not. <laughs> you can't. You you come off very intelligent. So don't worry about it, man. It's uh, it was it was a real pleasure to talk to you, and I understood everything you said. And um, thank you very much, Jeff. And your work speaks volumes speaks about your intelligence. So <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It really does. Anyway, thanks thank for being on the show. Thanks to you. Thanks for tuning in to the Undraped Artist Podcast. If you enjoyed it, subscribe. And if you could, leave a comment or review. That really helps the channel. Please share the show with your friends. And if you're feeling generous, consider a monthly donation at theundrapedartist.com. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week.